Hi, my name is Tom Mavro and welcome to the Cut It TV training channel. The channel has been set up to provide easy to follow training tutorials in today's key media production software. Cut It itself is a UK based training company with over 15 years experience providing hands on training in media production. If you would like any further information about our training services, please visit our website at www.cut-it.tv or check us out on social media. I hope you enjoy the following tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at how to keyframe audio levels using the rubber band on a clip in the timeline. Keyframing audio levels allows you to adjust the audio level of a clip within the clip itself. It allows you to create fades up, fades down, it allows you to dip sections of a clip, it even allows you to take, for example, an unwanted pop or a click out of a clip. To keyframe audio on the timeline, it's not a bad idea to expand your audio track and make that as large as you can. For details of how to do this, see the previous adjusting audio levels tutorial. There are three main ways of creating the audio keyframes themselves. So first of all, the pen tool can be used. In the toolbar itself, you have a pen tool, third tool from the bottom of the toolbar. Select that tool by clicking on it. Move over the audio rubber band for your clip and click. And by clicking on the rubber band, it creates a point called a keyframe. One keyframe on its own effectively does nothing. If you adjust its level up or down, it just brings the entire clip level up or down. Or if you move it left or right, it just moves the position of that individual keyframe. Keyframes have to work in pairs. So by adding a second keyframe and then clicking on either of those two keyframes and adjusting them up or down, suddenly you get a fade. So if I push this first one up, that would create a fade down in the audio level and increases the level up to that keyframe and then adjust between the two keyframe positions and then has a constant after the second keyframe. Or if I drag it down in the same vein, that now creates a fade up between the two keyframes. If I want a longer fade, I move the keyframe further apart. If I want a shorter fade, I move the keyframes closer together. If I want to further adjust the audio level of a keyframe, I drag it up or down. As you can see there underneath, it gives you a readout to say what the overall adjustment has been. And you can do that for any keyframes on your timeline. If I create some further keyframes here, I'll create a fade back down again. If you want some fine control over either the position or the value of the keyframe, first of all, if you pick a keyframe up and as you're adjusting it up or down, hold command down, it limits the amount of movement and allows you to fine tune the value of the keyframe. If you want to lock the position of a keyframe, either vertically or horizontally, start dragging the keyframe in the direction that you want it to go so either left or right or up or down i'll do left and right first and then once it's moving hold shift down on your keyboard and that then locks it so you can't move it up or down very easily or if i move it up or down and hold shift down it locks it so i can't it locks it so it makes it harder to move it left or right you can actually override this by dragging far enough with your mouse but it locks it for any small movements if you want to adjust the value of two keyframes simultaneously, rather than using the pen tool, if you switch back to the arrow tool and then move over a section of audio that you want to adjust, and instead of clicking on an individual keyframe, click on the rubber band between those two keyframes, that will adjust two keyframes simultaneously. To delete a keyframe using the pen tool, click on the keyframe and hit backspace to delete it. If I just undo that, and that can also be achieved using the arrow tool. Click on a keyframe, hit backspace. In fact, keyframes can actually be created using the arrow tool in the first place. So to do this, make sure you have your arrow tool selected, move over the rubber band for a clip and hold down your command key on a Mac, control on a PC and click. And by holding that key down, it creates new keyframes. If I need to select multiple key keyframes simultaneously, holding shift down and clicking on keyframes allows you to select more than one keyframe. And by hitting backspace, I can also delete multiple keyframes in that way. There is one other main way of creating keyframes on a clip on the timeline, and that is by using the add or remove keyframe button. This button 
is available for each audio track in the track control panel area. This is the button itself. The two arrows either side of the button allow you to jump your playhead from keyframe to keyframe. If you jump to an existing keyframe and click the add or remove keyframe button, it will delete the keyframe at the playhead position. If there is no keyframe currently at that playhead position, if you click the button, it adds a keyframe at the playhead position. To make this work, it's vital that you have the clip itself selected that you want to add keyframes to. If I just deselect the clip for the moment, you'll see that the add or remove keyframe button is grayed out. By clicking on the clip, it then becomes active again. The main use for this button is where you want to create frame accurate keyframes. So you might want two keyframes, for example, that are exactly 18 frames apart. In this case, you move your playhead to where you want your first keyframe and click the add keyframe button. Because I can frame accurately jump my playhead, I can then jump it 18 frames forwards and add a new keyframe. Now the simplest way of doing this is either to come to the timeline timecode and type in the new timecode that you want, but that can be a little bit difficult. Depending on my frame rate, obviously what an additional 18 frames would be in timecode is going to vary. Alternatively, you can click in here and delete everything by hitting backspace and type in plus or minus the amount that you want the playhead to move by. Plus would move it up the timeline towards the end of the timeline, minus would move it backwards towards the start of the timeline. So if I click in here and type in plus 18, when I hit enter, my playhead jumps 18 frames forwards, and then I can click the add keyframe button again. Now I've got two keyframes that I know are exactly 18 frames apart. I can then adjust that one. Remember by holding shift down, I can lock its position and make sure it doesn't move left or right. The other quite convenient use of the add or remove keyframes button is where you have a lot of keyframes. It allows you very quickly to jump to a specific keyframe and then also delete it if you need to. Mm -hmm.